A lot of folks have been asking me about those three-dimensional vice chops that I've made for the barn workbench. There's a couple of issues with making these vice chops. One of them is, is I had to use really thick wood. In this case, two and three quarter inch piece of maple. And in order to do that, I actually had to make a cut from the bottom and then flip the board over and make it from the top. And the trick with that, with a CNC, is you have to have that registration work perfectly. So drawing a center line down the board through here, I made sure that there was holes drilled in both sides of the board so I can work both sides. So I used the center axis along here on this spoil board that I had made, and then I installed a, a pin. In this case, uh, a quarter inch piece of stainless steel pin. And then when I set the board down like this, it would register into that pin. And when I needed to work on the top side for this three-dimensional carving, I flipped the board over in order to register on the pin holes on the back side of the boards. So first, what I needed to do is cut enough depth. And as I mentioned, two and three quarters is pretty deep. The longest my bits go is about a little over two inches. So I started with the back side, <clears throat> then I milled out to about an inch thick of depth here. At the same time, I milled the inch and a quarter hole that's necessary for the bench crafted vise that'll go here and this large mortised area here, which is about an inch and a half deep by, looks like about an inch and three quarter inches wide. Once that was done, then I took the board, flipped it over, rested it down on the dowel pins on this side, and proceeded to go, proceeded to go through the process of milling off the three-dimensionally shaped top. Let's look at a couple of features uh, that are in the spoil board that I created for this project. So as you can see, I put a V groove along here. That's my center axis. And along the center axis, there's a registration pin here. There's one at the other end as well. And that matches up to each board's registration hole on both ends, on both sides as well. So you can see that there's a line across here. That's my alignment point that's perpendicular to this. But there's a second line here. It's all outlined here in red. And then I put in a half inch hole here. Now the reason for the half inch hole is from day to day, I can check the alignment of this jig. Remember, I had to mill up 10 of these vices. And that means my sh machine was turned off and on in each day. Even though my machine's pretty precise, occasionally I wanted to check to make sure that everything aligned to this jig correctly. So armed with a half inch bit in my uh, machine, I'm able to lower it down into here. And if it doesn't fit or I need to adjust a thousandth this way, a thousandth that way, I can. And once that's done, then I know that I'm registered perfect to this spoil board. There's all kinds of designs of, of the vice chops. As I mentioned, I had to create 10. Here's three examples. The one back here was designed to imitate the look of roll and tuck upholstery. This one is that diamond tuck and roll with little buttons in between each section. And in this case, it's something completely different. It's a combination of using parametric design tools in Rhino 3D and geometric tools. So that's how these vice chops were made, using a center line and a pin registration system. Now I'll set off to cut these out and finish them up, and I'll show you the results in the next few weeks. Again, this is Tim Selesky for Popular Woodworking Magazine and Woodworking.Digital. Thanks again for watching.